Chapter 6 goes into discrete functions. Now what a discrete function is, is a regular function except um, along the horizontal axis, uh, your independent variable, you're only going to have positive whole numbers. There will be no negative numbers or decimals. Okay, now I'm just going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, your sequence. A sequence of numbers is kind of like a list. So for instance, 2, 4, 6, eight and so on. That's a sequence. Each number is separated by a comma and um, it's kind of arranged in a certain order. All right. Now I'm just going to talk about this a little bit further. Your first term has a term value of two. So this number up here is called your term number and this number down here is called your term value. Okay, so your third term has a term value of six and so on. Your term number is your independent variable. So this would be what would go along the horizontal axis. And notice that this is where the discrete function comes in. You can't have a 1.5 um, term because each term is a list. It's, you only have your first term, your second term, your third term, your fourth term, and so on. You also will never have a zero term or negative terms. Okay, so that's what they mean by your discrete functions. Your horizontal axis will always be positive whole numbers. On the other hand, your term values can be whatever. They can be negative or positive decimals, it doesn't matter. All right. Now in this tutorial, what I've done is I've broken up all of the questions into uh, certain categories and they're in orange. So this particular category is what happens when they give you a formula and then they ask you to find the first couple terms. So this one asks you to find the first five terms in the sequence and they've given you a formula. This is called an explicit formula. Okay, we're going to use that to find our first five terms. And we do that by figuring out our term number. So that's what goes in here, term number. Okay, and it's going to pop out our term value. So your n is kind of like your x, your term value is kind of like your y. All right, and this is how you find your first five terms. To find your first term, you're going to go T1, so it's like a little subscript. And then since your N is 1, you're going to sub in 1 for your N. Okay, so 4 times 1 minus 1 is just 3. So your first term's value is 3. And then term 2, sub in 2, just 7. Term 3. is 11 and let me just scroll down a little bit term 4 is 15 and then term 5 is 19 therefore the first five terms in your sequence are 3 7 11 15 and 19 and we're just going to put three dots that means it goes on and on forever okay so let's try that again with the next one t1 is 1 squared plus 1 which is just 2 your second term has a value of 6 your third term so just notice that you're subbing in whatever your term number is into your ends. And that is 9 plus 12, or sorry, 3 is 12. And T4, 4 squared plus 4, 20. And then your fifth term is 30. So therefore, your first five terms in this sequence is 2 comma 6 12 20 and 30 okay the next type of question you'll see is if I give you a formula I don't want a whole list of terms I want a specific term and in this case they want the ninth term so you're just going to use the explicit formula and you're going to go 
I want t9, which means that n must be 9, because I want the ninth term. Then you're just going to solve. 5 minus 72, which is negative 67. Okay, therefore, the ninth term is negative 67. Okay, so the term value is negative 67. And let's just try it again. This is pretty straightforward. So 9 instead of your n plus 10 over 2, which is 19 over 2. And you can either keep it like that or you can change it to a decimal. It should be 9 and a half, I believe. Okay, so therefore, the ninth term in this sequence is 9.5 or 19 point, or sorry, 19 over 2. The last question that we can see is given a sequence, so they gave you the sequence, determine the formula for the nth term. So we're actually creating that explicit formula. This can be a little bit more tricky. So what you're going to do is you're going to set it up in terms of term number and term value. You don't always have to do it this way. If you know right off the bat um, how to do it, then that's fine. But I find that this way kind of organizes my thoughts. So the first term, term number one, gives you a term value of five. The second term, term number two, gives you a value of nine. And third and fourth, three, four, is 13 and 17. Okay, so to create an equation off of this, um, it looks like the first difference is 4. It looks like it's going up by 4s. And I just got that by 9 minus the 5. So if I took the 13 minus the 9, it still goes up by 4 each time. In this case, this is a linear function. Okay, so that 4 is actually my slope. Um, so I got Tn, that's how we start off. Okay, and our slope kind of like mx, and then I just need to know if there's a plus b part. This is what you do next. You kind of check. If I took my term number and I put it in here, that's 4 times 1. It should equal to my term number, sorry, my term value ended up to be 5. But 4 times 1 does not equal to 5. So b has to be a positive one at the back in order to make that statement true. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to try it again. So let me just move all this over here and I'll just erase it. Try it with a different set of numbers and see if it works. Okay, so these guys. If I take 4 and I sub it in here, will I get 17? Well, 4 times 4 plus 1 does give you 17. So this is the correct formula. Okay, let's try it out with the other one. Set up your table again. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and then our term values are one, four, nine, and 16. So this one seems to be going up by three, and then five, and then seven. It's not really constant and because it's not constant it's not exactly a linear equation so we won't get a y equals mx plus b formula but if I do the second differences it looks like they're going up by the same number each time that tells me it's a quadratic formula okay so it's a x squared kind of formula so I have something in mind something like x squared but since we're dealing with n's, I put n squared. Okay? And let's just see if that works. So if I take this guy and I put it in there, will I get this one? Yeah, that seems to work. Okay, let's try it again. If I put my 4 in there, will it make 16? Yes, it does. Okay, so then this looks like it's just a regular quadratic formula. So that's it for our first introduction into discrete functions.